Hello, welcome back to the Dinoval Art. In this video, I hope to discuss about risk perception, assessment, and communication. So, this is the content of this video. So, we will discuss about all the information about this topic. So, first, let's see what is risk. Risk mean proactively made with consideration of possible positive and negative consequences that the uncertain future may bring. So the risk identification is done at during the design and implementation, before tasks are done, while tasks are being done during inspection and after the incident. So the difference between risk and hazard is hazard we mean anything that can cause harm. So the risk mean how great the chance that someone will be harmed by certain hazard. So this shows that risk is method of analyzing of hazard and this process is called HSCCP. So HSCCP is a systematic way to identify, evaluate and control food safety hazard. Next is quantitative risk assessment. This process is consists of five steps where hazard identification, hazard characterization, consequences analysis, risk estimation and evaluation, risk management. So let's see about the first step where the uh, hazard identification. This is done by using the checklist preliminary hazard review using HACCP and HACCP method. So HACCP method means studies are conducted during the late selected stage of a project when conceptual design layout is nearing to completion. So HACCP method means structure and systematic examinations of a complex plan or existing process or operation in order to identify the evaluation problems that may represent the risks to the personnel or equipment. This technique is based on the breaking the overall complex design of a process into number of similar sections called nodes which are then individually reviewed. So let's say general for chart for the hazard identification process. So the first is identify drawing and nodes. Collect drawing and break down into clearly defined nodes. Then define guide words. Define guide words to prompt hazard discussion for each node. Then select a node. Explain activities, operation, equipment. They are provide short overview of each node including design, overview and safeguard philosophy. Then identify your hazard using the guide as prompt. Then assess barriers, recovery measures, causes and consequences. Then recommended risk reduction measures, recommended changes to design operation to manage or reduce risk. Documented process and outcome. Workshop discussion is recorded in workshop sheet. Recommendation documented and report produced detail in the HACCP process and outcome. So let's see next step. Second step is hazard characterization or frequency analysis. Purpose of this is to estimate the likelihood for a hazard scenario to occur. This is done by two methods, inventory analysis and faulty analysis. First, let's see what is inventory analysis. This process is in four parts, initiating event, event one, event two, end state. Sometimes in a production area, this may be divided into few more events but here for the convenience I have used fire as initiating event so let's see how it is going to be happen so if there is a fire in a production area so in the first event we have to fuel fee to engine stop so if we do that it may be success or it may be failure so if it is success it is okay but if it is failure then we have to move to the event two Event 2 is fire suppression system acute. So it may be success or it may be failure. So what happened? If it is success even in event 1, 
then there will be minimal damage. But if it is unsuccessful even in event 2, then what happens? There will be severe damage, but it is success, then there will be moderate damage. So this is the event tree analysis. Okay, next analysis method is fault tree analysis method. In this method, Boolean logic is used to combine series of lower level events. So for the convenience, I have taken fire as initiating step. So if failure of fire protection system, what will be the reason for this? That may be due to the fire detection system fault or fire suppression system fault. So due to these reasons, failure of fire protection system has occurred. If you move down to more lower levels, so fire detection system fault may be due to the failure of smoke detector sensor or may be due to the failure of heat detector sensor. So due to these two reasons, Due to these, one of these reasons may be caused to fire detection system fall. So fire suppression system fall is due to no water to sprinkler system or sprinkler nozzle sub block. So one of these reasons may cause to the fire suppression system fall. So if we move down for more lower levels, failure of smoke detector sensor may be due to the smoke fail. So this reason is caused to the most upper level of failure of fire protection system. Failure of heat detector sensor may be due to cause of heat fail. So no water to sprinkler system may be due to the farm fail. So sprinkler nozzles are blocked due to the nozzle fail. So you see due to these lower level reasons there is upper level the huge damage has occurred failure of fire protection system so this kind of analysis is called fault tree analysis so the third step is consequences analysis in this step extent of the damage is assessed result of the risk how critical stage are evaluated in this step for example, if there is a fire in the working place, consequences due to the fire is evaluated in this state. If the toxic is released due to the fire or explosion is occurred, are considered in this state. If there is any toxic is released, the degree of dispersion, heat dispersion due to the fire, fatality assessment and non-fatal assessment like skin burn property damage is evaluated in this state. Okay, the first step is risk estimation and evaluation. The purpose of this step is to assess the risk and make safety judgment. So this is divided into two types, sociality risk and individual risk. So let's see what is sociality risk. The risk society is defined not just by the distributions of goods, but more so by the distributions of bad. For example, pollution, contaminations and other byproducts of production. So these are technological hazard that is because they are produced by the society are considered preventable. A contrast with natural hazard which are traditionally seen being studied by hazard researchers. So that said both type of hazard have impact that is intensified or mitigated by social, economic, political and cultural systems. They are both social in this respect. So the next type is individual risk. So this is divided into two types, IRPA and LSIR. IRPA means individual risk per annum. So probability that a specific hypothetical individual will be killed due to the exposure to the hazard or activities during one year. So LSIR means location specific individual risk. Probability that one year a person will become a victim to a accident and remain unprotected in a certain location okay final step is risk management the purpose of this step is to propose mitigating to reduce the potential impact of the hazard and possibly reduce the risk level this step is divided into three parts safe work procedure at every project stages emergency response management and emergency response procedure so the first one is safe work procedure so in this process 
Detailed record is prepared step by step to conduct the task. Individual are trained to carry out the process. So the next process is emergency response management. During this process, predetermine the appropriate control measures to eliminate or reduce the impact of hazard. Okay, third process is emergency response procedure. So it is consist of five parts. All these parts are interconnected. So let's see what are they: response, prevention, recovery action, preparedness, and mitigation. So the response mean action carried out immediately after hazard impact. Prevention mean action taken to avoid an incident. Recovery action mean action taken to return community to normal or near normal. Preparedness means developing mutual aid agreements and memorandum of understanding. Mitigation reduce the chance of emergency happening or reduce the damage. So finally, let's see the uh, strength and weaknesses in the quantitative analysis in risk assessment. So strength are provide the combination effect to the system rather treating each individually. Measure the risk in form of number and ranges which is more precise. Describe severity of risks in a form of numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4 means extreme, major, moderate or minor respectively. Provide range of options to deal with hazards so more accurate and realistic. Weaknesses are softwares are needed, more costly and require professionals to train people. Analytical output need more careful interpretations, great experience and advanced tool. Any systematic error can alter the results. Analytical results are more confusing and there is chance of errors. So this is only a rough idea about this perception assessment and communication. Soon in another video, I hope to discuss about how you are going to apply practically these concept within the company and prepare a hazard analysis report.